Hey everybody, so welcome back. We're looking at percent yield today, and percent yield is a way of calculating the overall efficiency reaction, sort of giving a reaction a grade. How much stuff did I get versus how much do uh, did I expect to get from these particular things? And again, that's very much like getting yourself a grade on a quiz. Uh, I could have gotten 20 points. I got 12, God, I hope not, got 18. Uh, what was my grade on that reaction? And that's kind of what we're doing with percent yield. Um, so it'd be like, I expected to create five grams of a product and I only got 2.5 grams. What was my percent yield? So that's the big idea for this. It's sort of just a way of doing a final evaluation on how good uh, a reaction sort of carried out. It's not a judgment. It's just a, it's just a, a mathematical way of dealing with that. So in terms of how this works out, um, like I said, it's like a grade, and just like a grade, the equation for it's actually really simple. Um, like if you think about the number of points you got in a quiz, you would do something like, I got 18 points, and it was 25 points total, and then you'd multiply it by 100 or something like that to give you the overall grade that you got. Well, the simple formula for this is the top number up here, um, this is the um, amount that you got, right? That was the actual amount that you received on the test, as opposed to the bottom number, was the maximum amount that you could have gotten on the test. Well, putting this into chemistry terms, stoichiometry terms, here's the formula for this. You get the number that you actually got, which is the actual yield. Um, and again, the actual yield would be, I went to lab, I actually weighed my filter paper, I got 1.5 grams. And then you divided it by the maximum you could have gotten, and that's called theoretical yield. Um, theoretical yield. Um, and again, theoretical yield, that's stoic. So the top number up here, the actual yield, that's like a lab value. How much did you produce? How much did you recover? Um, how much did you create? This bottom one down here, again, is based on stoichiometry. It's the math problem that you did on paper. How much could I have gotten? Uh, and again, don't forget, you multiply them by 100. That's what it looks like, 110. Wow, 100, there we go, percent to get your final value on it. When we do these calculations, by the way, they should always be less than 100%. Um, and I'll mention real quick how you could get over 100%. So typically, under 100%, there's always error in labs. Uh, there's limitations to how good our filter paper is. There's limitations to um, you know, how good the solutions were. Um, you know, did we lose a drop of something here and there? I'm not talking about mistakes necessarily, but mistakes will certainly uh, reduce, uh, reduce your percent yield. Um, a second thing that actually goes into this, and we don't talk about this a whole lot, is uh, reaction rate. Some reactions are really fast, and some of them are really slow. So the one that we did in class, our silver uh, production lab, where we did the silver nitrate plus copper, it's kind of a slow reaction. It's really fast right at first, and then it slows way down. And that's why we let them sit overnight, to kind of help make sure that we got to our 100% or close to it in terms of our yield. Um, and then there's some other complicating factors that we can get that can really affect our percent yield. Um, for example, some reactions are actually reversible. They, it, we haven't talked about that too much in here yet, but they might go both ways. So products sometimes are unstable and they fall apart. Um, complications, sometimes you get other things that are interfering with a reaction that could cause it to be less than 100%. Or like in ours in, in the silver lab, sometimes we get a secondary, this is kind of a complication, a secondary thing that's produced like silver oxide um, that can add a little bit of mass that we didn't necessarily intend to be there. So Typically, our percent yield is going to be under 100%, but um, there are occasions, uh, rare ones, where we could get over 100%. So let's do some practice problems on this. Okay, so this problem here is just like the lab that we did in class way back when, uh, where we put a piece of aluminum into a solution of copper chloride. So imagine that you did the stoichiometry and you calculated that you would make 5.75 grams of copper. You carry out the lab and then you filter out all the copper. And after filtration, you only recovered 4.38 grams. What's your percent yield? So uh, in this particular one, my strategy is to start with writing my equation, because I always like to start that, percent yield. Um, if I could write Y-E-L-D. acting a little weird today. Percent yield is actual divided by the theoretical, the stoic yield. Um, and I always like to start to kind of work back from this. Um, so times 100 gives me my percent. So do I have any of these parts? Um, do I have the actual yield? And then do I have the theoretical yield? Well, let's take a look at the problem we've got. We've got some numbers up in the problem up here. So we've got this one where it says uh, 5.75 grams of copper. Is that our actual or theoretical? If you take a look at the way it's worded, it says I calculated that I would do that. So if I calculated that, that means that that is my theoretical yield. It's my calculation. 
The other one down here is that I recovered 4.38 grams. So if I recovered that much, that means that's how much I actually have. So this particular piece, do I have what I need for my problem? And the answer is here, yes. I've got all the objects that I need. I've got the actual yield, because actually I've got 4.38 grams. And I've got my theoretical yield. No stoic required at this point. It was already done for me, 5.75 grams. And then all I have to do is multiply it by 100 to get my percent yield. Uh, in this case, if I do the whole thing out, um, I better figure out my calculator. There it is. Uh, it is 76.2 uh, percent yield on there. So not too bad, but that means I recovered about 76 percent of what I thought I would. So these are the easiest kind of calculations where the two numbers, the actual and the theoretical, are given to you already in the problem. So those are pretty simple. Moving on. This is a little bit of a rearrangement of these kinds of problems. So here's a problem where it says you carry out a reaction with a percent yield that's already known. It's known to be 83.7%. Uh, and if the theoretical yield is 17.5, how much product can you expect to recover? So if I were you, I would hit pause right now. This is a, a, a rearrangement, I guess, of the percent yield problem and see if you can figure out what the answer is. Did you get it? So here again is my formula, percent yield is actual, I'm going to start abbreviating, divided by theoretical times 100. All right, so what do we got? The percent yield now I have. So this value over here, this 83.7, that's my percent yield. So that's going to go over here in this spot. Second thing is, I have this other number, the 17.5 grams. And what is that? Well, it says it in the problem, so you should have gotten that one right. It says this is the theoretical yield. So what are the pieces that I know? I know I've got the, whoa, wrong, wrong pen, sorry. Um, I've got the uh, 83.7, because that's my percent yield. I don't know what my actual is. So I'm going to actually be solving for that. That's what this part says right here. How much product can you expect to recover? This section in here, I'm expecting to recover. That's my actual yield do I want to get. So I don't know that one yet. Theoretical yield is 17.5 grams. And again, that's times 100 because it's in percent. So when I do the rearrangement on this one, uh, by the time I work it out, I'm going to make my actual yield into an X. I'm going to move my 100 over as well. So if you're kind of what I'm doing, I'm going to take this piece right here, move it over this way. I'm going to divide this by 83.7, and I'm going to turn this into an X. So when you see this next step here, don't freak out in terms of what it looks like. So it's 0.837 equals x over 17.5. Um, then when I solve this out, algebra-wise, again, multiply by 17.5, so these cancel out, multiply this by 17.5, and then you get your final answer. x here would equal, uh, where is it, 0.837 grams. So I can expect to recover, uh, I think it's supposed to be 8.37 grams. Oh, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm going to back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Back up. Um, I totally did that wrong. What am I doing? I'm looking at the wrong number on my calculator. So if I do 17.5, I'm back over here, sorry. If I do 17.5 times 0.837 and not just write the number again because I'm an idiot, I get this particular value, 14.6 grams. That's what I get for looking at my calculator fast, is what my actual yield should be. That's what I think I should be able to pick up. So the lesson on these is that um, if you're doing these sorts of problems, I can give you any two of these and you solve for the other one. I could give you actual and theoretical, you solve for percent yield. I could give you percent yield and theoretical, you can solve for actual, or vice versa, I can give you percent yield and an actual and you'd solve for theoretical, although those are a little bit harder. Again, any two of the three, you should be able to plug them in and use some basic algebra to solve that out. So let's move on to the next type. Okay, so this one's a little bit harder because it's just the way that it's worded out here. So this is another reaction that we've done in class where we've got a piece of magnesium that we're dropping into hydrochloric acid, and then we're making our lovely hydrogen gas, whoop, and uh, some magnesium chloride over here as our, our product, so that's what we're doing here. So let's take a look at what we're given in the problem so we can take this apart. Or if you want to, it's probably smart for you to hit pause right now and take a look at it uh, and see if you can figure out what these pieces are and how you would apply this to a percent yield problem. So I'm going to let you should hit pause, solve it, come on back. I'll tell you to hit pause again in a second. Okay, so what do we have? So this 0.28 grams of hydrogen gas, this is what was recovered. So if I got this, 0.28 grams, and that's my recovered part, and then this piece up here, 4.5 gram piece of magnesium, that's the 4.5 grams. So this is recovered. Again, the key word here is that recovered is our actual yield, uh, T-U-A-L. So that's our actual yield. This one right here is a reactant. 
we can't just put this directly into a percent yield problem because remember percent is actual divided by theoretical. We don't know the theoretical yet and that's the whole point with these is that we're going to have to figure out the theoretical part. So we don't know that. So how do we get theoretical yield? That's stoichiometry. Yay! Because I know you wanted to do another wonder fraction. So this would be a good place for you to stop, kind of work out your stoichiometry, determine your theoretical yield of hydrogen, and then you can carry out the percent yield part of your problem. So again, these are on two different sides. We've got a reactant and a recovered amount of product that should kind of help you kind of go, wait, I need to do percent yield. Those are both product pieces. So I got to do some stoichiometry to figure out the theoretical yield. So hit pause again, see if you can calculate. I'm going to move on in just a second. Okay, so here we go. Here is my stoichiometry piece. I got 4.5 grams of magnesium. Again, what am I doing? Sorry, I probably should tell you that, right? Actual divided by theoretical. So what I'm actually trying to do right now is I'm trying to figure out the theoretical yield. I've got the actual because that's what's given to me right here. This is the recovered amount. So I'm trying to determine the theoretical yield so that I can eventually do my percent yield. So back to my stoic, 4.5 grams of magnesium. Uh, moving along, I've got to do grams to moles of magnesium. Then my next step is going to be moles to moles, grams to moles, moles to moles. This would be magnesium to hydrogen, because the hydrogen's the product I'm referring to. And then my last step is going to be moles to grams. Grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. Getting used to that yet? Moles of H2 to grams of H2. So there's my setup for my stoichiometry problem. The next thing is to kind of go back and put in my molar masses. The molar mass of uh, magnesium is 24.3. Again, that's from the periodic table. My ratios here uh, between hydrogen and magnesium in my mole to mole steps, I'm talking about this step right here. I've got to look back at my problem between magnesium and hydrogen. Apparently it's a nice easy one to one, so that makes it a little bit easier. And then the last thing that I need is for this step I need the molar mass of hydrogen gas, which happens to be 2.02. It's a two right there. So if I math all of this out, I end up with this number, 0.37 grams of H2 is our theoretical yield. So now I can do the last part, which is to figure out what, what my uh, percent yield is from all of this. So percent yield, I'm going to have to sneak it in this corner down here, is going to be actual divided by theoretical. My actual was 0.28. My theoretical was 0.37. Multiply this by 100. And if I do all of that out, I get this number, 75.7% is my percent yield for this reaction. Again, I need to have those two different parts, actual yield and theoretical yield, to do percent yield problems. Sometimes you have to do stoic first to calculate the theoretical yield. All right, almost there. One more. Last one here. This is the most challenging one of the whole set because I don't even give you the equation. So this is a really good self-check. Quiz yourself to see if you can do this from start to finish. So this is a percent yield problem. And again, it's very similar to the last one where I've, where I've done it, where you're talking about 1.25 grams of potassium iodide. That's a reactant. And you've given an amount that's recovered of a product, 1.10 grams of precipitate. So if you can do this one, man, you can do any kind of problem that we have in this entire chapter because it really puts a lot of different things together. If you can't do this, that's okay. Um, I'm going to, you know, we'll hit pause. You can do any, any one of these steps at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is write and balance the equation. The next thing I'm going to do is to kind of use my formulas and figure out what I need. The third thing I'll do is going to be a stoichiometry problem. And then finally, I'm going to put them into that percent yield piece. So that's kind of the strategy I'm going to use. So if you needed that hint, there you go. Time for you to get to work. And I'm going to start writing equations here in a second. So hit pause now. Spoilers, right? Equation coming soon. So first thing we've got to do is we have to write our equation because we've got potassium iodide. And there's that stuff. And we've got lead to nitrate, okay? So potassium iodide, potassium iodide. Potassium is 1 plus. Iodine is a 1 minus. So that is the formula right there. Uh, lead to nitrate. Lead is that. And it's a 2 plus. Nitrate is NO3, nitrate's a 1 minus, so that's where that 2 comes from. Hopefully you recognize this now as being a double displacement reaction. I've got a compound and another compound, so they're going to switch partners. I'm going to have PB and I together, I'm going to have K and NO3 together. Those are going to be my two partners. So that's my next bit, a little review on how to do double displacement reactions. So I'm going to have uh, lead 
and iodine. So now lead is was a 2 plus on the left. It's still a 2 plus on the right. They don't change. Um, again, so that's a 2 plus. Sorry, it's kind of written too small. Iodine's a 1 minus. So now I have to write my subscript there. And then the other part is the potassium nitrate. K is a 1 plus. Nitrate is a 1 minus. So that's balanced just like that. I need to balance my equation is the last part of this whole thing. So I have a 2 here and a 2 way out in front. So now my equation is complete and balanced and ready to stoic with. So now is a good time to hit pause again if you didn't get that right before you move on. So my next idea is to identify what I know and what I need. So I know I've got this 1.25 grams of Ki. And then I have over here my precipitate. Well, you may or may not have precipitation rules in front of you. That's cool. Uh, I happen to know that nitrates are always soluble and potassium always is soluble. It's kind of like sodium. So that's not it. This one, the PBI2, has to be my PPT. And I've got 1.10 grams of this, and that's actual. Here's my actual. There we go. And again, how do I know it's actual? Because of this keyword in here, you recovered 1.10 grams. So that's an actual product. All right. So the next thing is I have to do some stoichiometry because in order to do percent yield, again, one more time, I need actual and I need theoretical. That's my goal is to do percent yield. So my goal is this. This is what I need to do that goal. I've got the actual, which means I have to do the theoretical part in order to be able to apply this in my last step. Again, goal is to do percent yield because that's what the problem is asking me for. So kind of working backwards, here's how I do percent yield. Given actual, not given theoretical. Got to calculate that. So this is the wonder fraction. Yeah, yeah. So time to carry that one out. If you haven't hit pause yet, now is the time. You can do this part. Even if you have had trouble on writing the reactions, don't stress about that part. Do the stoichiometry now on your own. Check yourself, see if you got it. Okay, here I go. Hope you weren't, uh, hope you didn't just let this play. 1.25 grams, so there's a dot there, grams of Ki. And then we're going to do our little long wonder fraction. So this is going to be grams of Ki to moles of Ki, grams to moles. Our next step is going to be moles to moles. Convert to the chemical I want, moles of Ki, to moles of our precipitate. And our precipitate, we decided, was PBI2. So grams to moles, moles to moles. And our final step is going to be moles of PBI2 to grams of PBI2. Again, this is the strategy that I use where I work out the units and then I go deal with the numbers. I have a really hard time jumping back and forth between the numbers and then setting up the different steps, but it, you can do it number by number if you want to. So molar mass, uh, in terms of the molar mass of Ki, uh, when I figure that one out, it's 166.00, I believe, uh, if I did that right. So 166 grams of Ki, that's the mass of potassium and the mass of iodine from the periodic table, and that's one mole. Next step is to use my mole to mole ratio. So we're over here. I don't know what that is. Here we are at the mole to mole ratio. And I look at my balanced equation. We're going from Ki, which has 2, to PBI2, which has 1. So there's 2 Ki and 1 PBI2. That's our mole to mole ratio from our balanced equation. Last step here is another grams to mole step, or it's a, it's a molar mass step. So the molar mass of PBI2, it's actually quite heavy, uh, 461.00 grams. Again, molar mass from the periodic table. I had to look up the mass of lead, and then two times the mass of iodine, and that's where that 461 came from. So after all of this, woo, we get a, a, actually a ridiculously small number, 1.74 uh, grams. That is our calculated value. So that's our theoretical yield. That's what it means. When we do stoichiometry, that's our theoretical yield right here of our PBI2. So now we're ready to go use our percent yield. Remember, our percent yield is actual divided by theoretical. Actual was given to us. There it is. It's in the problem, right? We now just figured out the theoretical yield. So now it's a simple matter of putting them together. Percent yield is going to be actual 1.10 grams divided by our theoretical 1.74 grams. It's just that last little piece put on top times 100 to get it into the percent form. And then by the time we're done with all of this and we math it out, we get 63.2% yield. So this is a pretty challenging problem, all the different things that you had to do. Um, if you got stuck with writing the equation part of this, don't feel bad. Again, that's an older skill. That's not the one that we were worrying about. If you could do this part, the stoichiometry step, that's kind of like that nine 
9C or 9BC kind of skill where we're actually doing stoichiometry to start to finish and then plugging it back into the theoretical yield. Um, then you're in really good shape if you could do this. If not, uh, you know, maybe rewind it and try this problem again on your own. All right, there you go. Percent yield problems from uh, simple to hard. Hopefully this helped you out. See you next time.